So in the previous video, we derived this uh, density of uh, state uh, for the case of a three-dimensional semiconductor, and we found that it was proportional to this density of state mass to the power of uh, three halves, and it was also proportional to the square root of uh, energy. And uh, you know, this is true for the case where you have this uh, three-dimensional uh, semiconductor and you have this cuboid of uh, uh, semiconductor material but most of these devices you know that we use uh, in semiconductors they are not like you know they they are not uh, uh, this huge uh, cubicle uh, blob of semiconductor so you know most of the devices that we use have this uh, they're two dimensional uh, in nature for example let's say you know this might be the case where you have a, a quantum well or you know you have a MOSFET device and you have a two-dimensional electron and hole gas in that MOSFET device. So essentially the motion of uh, a carrier in such a device, in a two-dimensional device, they're free to move along this uh, x and y direction but they're you know confined in this z direction. And similarly you know especially with the uh, advances going on in na nano electronics and so on a lot of these one dimensional and zero dimensional devices are becoming uh, popular as well where for example this one dimensional device could be a nano wire where you have uh, your transports or your electron which is confined in two dimension but these carriers are free to move in one direction mm -hmm. and similarly you might have this quantum dots where you know your carriers are pretty much confined within this box and they're confined in all x and y and z direction so what i'm interested in in this video is essentially to find out this uh, density of uh, state uh, equation or you know find out how this density of state behaves for this uh, two dimensional one dimensional and zero dimensional uh, uh, systems and in particular i want to find out you know what is the functional dependence of this density of state on uh, energy and what is the functional dependent on this density of state mass uh, so let's you know let's dive in so let's let's start with the case where you know we have a two dimensional semiconductor so shown here is a, is a two-dimensional uh, slab of semiconductor. So, you know, the motions of uh, electron is confined in this uh, Z direction, but they are free to move in these other X and Y uh, direction. And I'm going to use pretty much the same analysis that I uh, used uh, in my three-dimensional semiconductor to derive uh, this relationship. So let's go back into the K space and then I in the case of have a two-dimensional semiconductor in real space I also have a two-dimensional K space so I have KX and uh, KY and I know that each of my each of my states it occupies you know it occurs at a distance of uh, pi by L so each of these uh, each of these states has essentially in the K space it has the area of uh, pi by l square so now you know now how many states can i have in a you know in a given area in this k space so let's say you know i have i have uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, circle and you know the number of states i can have uh, within this circle is essentially given by the area of the circle so this is one fourth of a circle so its area is let's say pi times the radius square pi k square and it's one fourth of a circle so divided by four and uh, then the number of states i can have is essentially you know the area in the k space divided by area each of these uh, each of these states occupy so you know i'm going to divide it by pi by l square or i'm going to multiply it by l by pi square and then each of these states uh, has to be you know it could be filled up by either a spin up or a spin down so you know i multiply uh, by that and so that gives me you know the number of uh, states i can have in this uh, given area in k and then again, you know, similar to what I did in a 3D case, so I take a derivative of this. So I take a dn by dk, and uh, in this case, is essentially it turns out to be, you know, so I maintain by L square, and I take this derivative, so I get an extra 2 from here, and and so 2 into this 2 and then divided by 4 so that cancels out and i get essentially l square by pi into k and now i'm going to use the same analysis that i used uh, for my three-dimensional case so again i know that my 
my density of state i can write it down at the you know the number of state i have per unit energy and in this case it's a two dimensional case and then in the number of states i have per unit uh, energy divided by the area and then i can again use chain rule to you know uh, further expand this uh, expand uh, this uh, this dn by de relationship and you know i can write it uh, in terms of dn by dk and dk by de and again i i can use my ek relationship and you know i can use uh, uh, i can use that to essentially find out what is my dk by de and i can substitute uh, both of them into this relationship so i take uh, this value of uh, dn by dk and you know i put it uh, over here and then i again take this value of dk by de and i put it uh, over here so let's let's do that so you know let's let's uh, let's do that uh, over here so essentially what i what i get is uh, is i get uh, so my density of state in my two dimensional uh, semiconductor it's essentially one over the area in this case the area of the sab is l square and then uh, dn by dk and which i derived to be l square k by pi so you know l square k by pi and then dk by de which is essentially m into h square by k so i see a lot of things uh, cancelling out so this l square cancels out with this l square similarly this k cancels out with this k and looks like I'm, I'm left with very few terms so what i'm left with is essentially my density my density of states is essentially now given by uh, density of states for my two dimensional semiconductor it's essentially m into and then i can expand this h bar h bar by h by 2 pi so i'll get uh, 4 pi m by h square so this is this is actually a very interesting relationship so if i look at my density of state for a two-dimensional semiconductor it's actually not depending upon energy at all so you know there's no energy dependence of uh, density of state in a two-dimensional semiconductor also it's dependent on this uh, m or this density of state mass and that dependence is it's proportional directly to this density of state mass into the power of one so i'm running out of time uh, in uh, this video but in the next video let's derive this density of state relationship for a one dimensional and zero dimensional semiconductor and then we'll ponder upon this energy dependence of uh, of density of state uh, for 3d 2d and uh, 1d semiconductors and uh, we'll you know brood over a little bit about it